We'll start off with a quick unboxing. I'll go over the design and overview. We'll do a gaming test, full teardown, and we'll talk about upgrades. And then I'll talk about the configurations and whether it's worth it to get the newest models or even consider possibly some of the older ones. I'll help you pick the correct configuration for this machine personally. So let's get into the unboxing. So Alienware seems to be one of the few gaming laptop manufacturers that have decent unboxing experience. All right, let's go ahead and pop this box open. Take note, they have this really neat exterior design. It's almost like kind of like a translucent decal that you can only see under certain lighting conditions. The light bounces off it, then you can see it. So this is a 15 inch model. It's got the nice key travel. This is one of the best keyboards I've ever experienced. Thunderbolt support and then the cryotech, which means it actually cools the laptop pretty decent. And then we have their creation story, which is kind of cool. It talks about their passion for building machines. On the left, we have the uh, regulatory information that won't really be useful. And then on the right, we have the quick start guide. This is kind of a cool little touch if you ever want to know like what, what ports do what, if something is a speaker or not. Just kind of helping you set up your machine. So if you've never set one up, it's kind of nice to start here. We also have some information regarding the model type, the specifications of the machine as well. If you guys do have any issues at all with your device, Dell does want to help you out. So reach out to them. They have a pretty good help system. They've, they've gotten much better in recent years. When I needed help, when I called them, they actually were able to help me out. And I was kind of impressed. And there it is. In recent years, we've seen the gaming machines go from looking very ugly to these amazing, elegant devices. They found a way to maintain the beauty. The days of the old gamer-esque feel are now gone. Now we have machines that are elegant. And it is a little bit flashy for my taste, but it's so much better than what the machines used to look like in the past. I mean, look at it. This thing looks almost like it's a work of art. Now there are some design choices that I would probably change, Starts off with the Kensington lock, ventilation, ethernet, USB 3.1 plus charging, auxiliary headphone jack. And then as we go around the side, we got this nice rubberized texture. The black portion of the laptop feels very cheap and plasticky, but the white portion feels amazing. We got two USB 3.1 ports and then additional air ventilation. And then as we go around, we see that there's exhaust vents from the side and from the back. We also have this really cool blue LED strip that does change colors. HDMI, mini display port, Thunderbolt and USB-C port, graphics amplification port if you want to plug in a video card, power plug, and then exhaust vents one last time. They did a phenomenal job by reducing the flashiness of the machine and giving it kind of more of a rounded, more minimalist look. I think they're definitely onto something here. This looks substantially better than the previous iterations. But the thing that really concerns me the most is the cooling. And that's something that they actually did honestly tackle in this edition. Uh, machine, I mean, honestly, the keyboard sets the standard for all gaming keyboards. And when you're playing on it, it almost feels like you're just playing on a desktop, like you're not even on a laptop. Really with laptops, we do have a lot of compromise. Anytime you're able to look at it, from a perspective of there doesn't feel like there is a compromise, that is an amazing, amazing achievement on their part. I am running the game at max graphics. Uh, you get around 40 to 60 FPS. If you reduce the graphics, you can get about 80 to 100 FPS. But honestly, I don't see any issues there. Here we are playing some Rust. Got the graphics maxed out, getting a good 60 to 40 FPS. Honestly, he was coming at me, so I figured, you know what? This guy, I'm gonna have to fight him. I did get a good hit on him, but it turns out he actually did have a pistol, so... Kind of surprised he pulled out his pistol. I think he got really scared. And then somebody else ended up killing him. I was like, GG. It was pretty fun. We do see that there is some power Hi. limit throttling going on. And with all laptops these days, especially the thin ones, we can tell that there's no way that the power brick will actually be able to power the GPU and CPU fully. We have kind of a combination of either the CPU taking too much power away from the GPU or the GPU requesting more power than what the CPU needs. At this point though, because of the pressure they feel to make the device thin and sleek, there's really kind of almost no way to fully even have the hardware run as fast as it should because, I mean, how are you gonna do that? How are you gonna 
have a, a machine that's so thin. I mean, the fans are not even big enough to fully cool the device. You know, it is really fun to game on these machines. And the fact that they are smaller, it is to some extent useful. And some will argue that getting that extra 25% performance is kind of not a big deal. I sort of agree to some extent. You know, it could be a big deal to, to some, might not be a big deal to others. With most games, it's probably not going to matter. Other, now, Alienware and Dell do make laptops that uh, thermal throttle substantially less and that power limit throttle less, so it really depends on which machine you're looking for. I will have some cards up on machines that I'm recommending for you guys. Alienware does make a machine that I think is phenomenal. You can upgrade the video card, the storage, the RAM. You can upgrade the CPU, and it uses desktop-grade components in a laptop. This, I think, is a huge breakthrough. All right, so let's take this machine apart. I use uh, an iFixit kit. These are kits that can take apart any type of electronic, which I really like. They're they're pretty cheap for the for the price. You do get pretty much all the tools you could possibly ever want. You can take apart pretty much any machine you want. When you take the back panel off, you'll see that it has these special devices that keep the screws in place. So the screws actually can't be lost. They can't be removed from the back panel. This is a phenomenally genius design because if the screws are different sizes, you're not mixing them up. The screws just are always in the right place. So at first glance at the machine, there is like this flap that protects a lot of the electronic components. And it does look a little ugly on the inside. They really did not take much time to um, organize the internals and there's some huge disappointments that I have to talk to you guys about. Can't really upgrade the you know, RAM and uh, so the upgrades are minimal on this machine. However, keep in mind that because you can't upgrade it, the machine is more affordable, right? So this was a trade-off. They wanted to get the machine in people's hands, but they sacrificed upgradability. And I think that's okay. I think that not everybody needs to upgrade their machines, but this will be a machine for certain types of people that don't really want to fiddle with the hardware. They just kind of want to get it pre-made. The battery is 76 um, watt hour, which is kind of small. I mean, it could be a little bit bigger. I, I think they should just put the largest battery in the machine possible, but I think that they, they know they can reduce it because the Alienware M15 is not really designed to be a laptop for very serious people. And it does, again, because the CPU and GPU uh, performance has been decreased, that smaller battery probably is it's decent enough for the machine. It could have been bigger, but it's decent. Everything in there will work. Okay, so let's upgrade the SSD. So this appears to be one of the only things you can upgrade in the machine. This SSD has a heatsink on top of it. So SSDs actually do get hot. And so nowadays you can get a little heatsink that comes along with your SSD. And Dell graciously included this, which is kind of cool. I'm kind of glad they included this. And so you have a, a little thermal pad. You don't want to touch that. It's basically toxic waste. This is basically a copper heatsink. So when taking out the SSD, normally when you remove the screw, you can lift the SSD up diagonally, but I had to wiggle it out. And the SSD was under so much pressure that it shot out. I was barely just kind of pulling on it and it shot out and did like a little, like a little 360 spin. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that it, it did like it like literally jumped up and spun around uh, kind of surprising okay uh, I actually thought this SSD was pretty quick it is a NVMe SSD and uh, it does have pretty good read and write speeds I think anybody doing any kind of video editing work or anything that requires a fast SSD this this actually runs pretty dang nice pretty fast impressed with the uh, performance of this SSD. I probably wouldn't even bother upgrading it, honestly. Unless you guys need more storage, that would be the main reason. When you're inserting the SSD, make sure that it's properly inserted and seated, that nothing is crooked and that, because if it is crooked and you insert it incorrectly and then you put the screw on there, uh, you may damage some of the pins on the motherboard and or chip the actual SSD insertion area. I got the SSD properly placed and now I'm screwing it back in. However, I did forget to put the heatsink back on now I'm not sure if this particular SSD even needs the heatsink but it did come with one so most likely it's probably useful so make sure that you do put that heatsink back on before you screw your screw in everything else that you're looking at here you really can't do much with it it's all kind of soldered in place and this is probably okay seeing as the machine is cheaper and more people will get access to this machine 
Okay, so something I'm disappointed about on the R2 is you can't really customize the display. It's basically 60 hertz, 1080p, 300 nits. It's kind of an okay display. I think if you're gaming, you can definitely get something much better. If you can afford the R3, go for the R3 because it's going to have more ports and it's going to have uh, better customizations and better processors. Although if you're very price sensitive and you need the, something a little bit cheaper, the uh, R2 and R1 are definitely great, great ways to save on the r3 you do have options for the 144 hertz screen with 7 millisecond response time which is pretty impressive and they do have a couple other options that you can customize the 10th gen cpus on the r3s they're not a huge improvement but you will see some improvement in battery life maybe five to ten percent improvement and now a word from our sponsors edraw max Edraw Max can be used to create diagrams or charts with its built-in editable symbols and templates for a range of categories. It features technical diagrams, which can help create flow charts, organizational charts, mind map, network diagrams, floor plans, workflow diagrams, business charts, and engineering diagrams. If you have a diagram need, this software is a must. Watch as I manipulate this engineering diagram for a remote control circuit. Even if I move the symbols, they continue to be connected within reason. This diagram follows the same connectivity logic. If you select a different type of diagram, it will have a different tool set that's still editable and designed to be tweaked and manipulated easily. The user experience is pretty good. The program is fluid and has adequate controls. If you're working in iOS development and are working side by side with UI programmers, these diagrams could be very useful for either the marketing department or programmers alike. Here I edit the element and enlarge it to make it easier to press this button. Not in iOS development? No problem. This program includes Android assets. These diagrams could help you create a symbolic prototype of what the UI could look like. And from there you could imagine how it's designed. This can help inspire your designs and give people who don't actually do UI design the ability to construct what they're imagining. Since not everybody's a programmer, basic diagrams are also available. There's no comparison. EdRaw is much better than Visio. You get the ability to have better team collaboration. So if you're not only one working on the project, these features will be useful for your team. You can share edits, add comments. The program allows you to add attachments even. And when it comes to editing the actual diagrams, its quick functions are superior. I highly recommend it. I'll have links in the descriptions to download EdRaw Max. And they do have the uh, 2070 Super. Which, you know, 2070 Super, it's going to be a little bit better. You are going to see in improvements, but really you got to ask yourself, are these improvements going to be worth the additional cost? Usually the newer models proportionately cost way more than they should. So that's why I always tell people get refurbished, get the older models, even consider getting used. But really, if you're not price sensitive, go all out and get the get the best device you can so you can reap the rewards. In most games, getting the highest end hardware isn't really going to mean much because most games will run just fine. But there are some games like Rust where you absolutely need the highest end hardware hardware when you're playing it because it really matters. In Rust you can pretty much lose everything you have in a very short amount of time and if your performance is not on par then you're basically screwed. Like when I went to a 144 hertz screen while playing Rust I was so much better. So any chance you get upgrade the screen it's extremely important especially if you can get some kind of G-Sync technology that really helps reduce the screen tearing and it adds this like extra layer of fluidity when you're moving around. It's it's absolutely amazing. I love it. One of the things I'm disappointed with is the thick bezels. I think that when they're not utilizing all the available screen real estate, that they're just kind of making unnecessary compromises. Although the issue is when you do make a laptop for kind of a casual user or somebody who's just kind of a gamer, it sort of makes sense. Yeah, we're going to have compromises pretty much in all areas. I really just wish that, that companies would make devices that have less compromises. Like I know it's I know it's possible. I know you can do it. And that's partially why I like the, the razor blade, but the razor blade has a lot of quality control issues, which I think it might even have more quality control issues than Alienware. With the Alienware, at least it works and there's no like weird screen flickering or defects in the keyboard, both of which I've experienced with my uh, razor blade. I also think that the that again this laptop is just a little too shiny. 
Earlier, I briefly touched on the keyboard and I gotta hand it to them. They've really figured this out. They figured out keyboards many years ago. I think they figured out keyboards like six to eight years ago. So really, you're not gonna have problems with the keyboard at all. They do have this very nice, satisfying click. The sound that it makes is nice and uh, it's kind of fluid and then it kind of snaps back as you push on it. And when you're typing around, it everything just seems to work. But the trackpad is my biggest um, complaint of this machine. Trackpad plus the speakers are, are probably, I think, the worst thing about this machine. The trackpad has this, this lag that I really don't like. And the speakers, they just don't really sound good. They sound very, like, very passable, very mediocre. Like, I was just buying a mediocre machine. That's what the speakers would sound like. They just don't sound that great. But again, all that uh, makes up for when you take into consideration how awesome th these keys are. And it's kind of cool, that little Alienware logo for the power button. They um, made it a little bit smaller, moved it away to the side. I think too many people were pushing it by accident. Now all the areas that are black on this machine utilize this extremely hollow cheap plastic and if you touch it it makes this kind of weird hollow noise which I'm not a fan of and it is a little bit flashy in some areas. I really prefer that they design the laptop based on function and utility not based on trying to improve the aesthetics. Good aesthetics will come from inside outward. I don't think that they should be focusing on the aesthetics and then putting stuff on the inside, which is how this machine was designed, which I think is kind of a shame. I think anything that looks shiny is really just not needed. I would prefer the most muted look for a machine. Now, first glance when you open it up, the hinge is very stiff. I was very surprised to see this because you don't see this on all of the Alienware models, just a few select models. Now I think it's just such a thin device that they kind of didn't really think about the hinge. I mean, it is a small gripe, but it is a little bit annoying that you have to use both hands. I do want to save time when I'm using a machine. When we get a little closer to examine the exterior design, we can see even the, the digits that say 15 for the 15 inch screen are kind of muted. Same thing with the Alien logo. It's kind of white, it's kind of muted. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, I think, you know, since you've watched this far, you're probably one of the types of people that really could benefit from this content. I would suggest you just, you just subscribe. You, you won't regret it, I guarantee it. And if you guys ever need anything at all, anything, just let me know. And um, I'll definitely help you out, whatever it may be, not just YouTube related, but whatever. I'm here for, for you guys, so reach out if you need something, you know, communicate with me if you want to, I'm here for it. MPAL hooked me up with one of these headphones to do a quick review and uh, I wanted to share it with my subscribers and, and possible viewers that these are actually some pretty awesome headphones for the price. I believe they're about 40 something dollars, like 42 or 47, somewhere around there. And um, you're getting almost the same level of quality as like Bose headphones, for instance. Bose sells a pair that's very similar to this, but it actually costs roughly $200. Now you won't get um, the same sound quality, but the sound quality is pretty dang acceptable. Like if you're in the market for headphones and you can only spend, you know, 40 something dollars, these ones are definitely something you should consider uh, because they have this really nice texture on them. They have great build quality and these earmuffs have extremely good comfort. Like this is actually the most comfortable headphones I've ever worn. And for them to only be 40 something dollars, this is an absolute breakthrough in technology. Um, when you're examining them, you can see that they do fold in like this, which is really, really useful for when you're traveling, you fold them in, throw them in your bag, you're good to go, don't worry about it. And then other times, um, what you can do is you can um, fold the actual uh, ear cups down so you can lower the clearance for these headphones. So normally headphones are gonna be like this, right? But you can fold them in to themselves and then you can actually do this as well if you want to. And that also kind of saves some space, which is pretty cool, I think. They have decent controls on one of the um, earmuffs. You got pause, play, skip. It also has USB charging, 
So as long as you have any kind of power brick, you just plug it in here, you can charge it right up. If you need to, it does have the capability to have uh, an auxiliary connection, which I find very useful. The Bluetooth connection is good. I haven't had any interruptions with it. Um, but again, I want to stress the quality and the comfort of these headphones. They're the most comfortable headphones I've worn. And to think that they only cost like 40 to 41 to 42 something dollars. I mean, the price on these might actually go up because of how good the quality is. Um, and it also has this on the top over here, this, this cushiony, extremely soft uh, material. It's, it's just soft in all directions. And, and again, the flexibility is unreal. Absolutely love them. Oh yes, and then there's there's additional adjustments you can do if you have a much larger head. If you guys know of any better headphones or alternative headphones, they may just have a slightly different design. Maybe they're not necessarily better, but they're just different and you want me to consider them, definitely let me know in the comment section below because I am looking to uh, explore, test new devices out, and uh, I absolutely love tech, so I'm very happy that Empow made these. I'll be checking out um, their other products as well, and I'll be reviewing them as well. So if you guys are interested, definitely subscribe because that content is definitely coming your way. So I hope to see you guys in the video, and uh, yeah, bye.